What's up guys? So, as you probably already know by the title of the video, this is my protein fluff recipe. Now, I'm many of you know that I already have a video on how to make the protein fluff. As Legion's Facebook forum is growing, and as my Instagram page is growing, I'm getting a ton of questions on how I make my protein fluff. Almost daily people ask me about it. So, I wanted to go a little more in depth. In the last video, um, it was one of the first videos I made. I didn't go very in depth into the process, how I make it, all the tips and tricks I use to make it better. And I also really didn't know how to edit videos back then, so it was a little, it was a little rough. But I'm gonna remake everything, uh, show you guys the whole process. This might be a little bit longer video just because I'm gonna try to go into depth about every detail people ask me about so I don't keep getting all the same questions over and over. So let's get started. Now I'm not actually gonna make my fluff till later tonight. It's it's only like 2.30 right now but one trick I use is starting earlier in the day I'll take the bowl I'm gonna make it in. I'm gonna weigh out the Greek yogurt which is the base. Put it in the container that I'm gonna make the fluff in and then I'm gonna put it in the freezer. Now the colder you can get the ingredients prior to making the fluff, the better it'll fluff. So by putting this in the freezer beforehand, the Greek yogurt's actually gonna be frozen, keeping the whole fluff and the actual bowl a lot colder. You'll turn out with a lot better fluff and it's gonna be easier to make. So this is um, Chobani Greek yogurt. Now, as long as it's Pretty much any brand of fat-free Greek yogurt will work. Um, I usually go with this because I can get it at Sam's Club in my college town. Otherwise, I'll go with um, the Kirkland brand. That's really cheap. Otherwise, I'll use Fate, Fage, 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 Fage. I don't know. Someone will probably correct me. I don't. I've never known how to say it, but you know what brand I'm talking about. Any non-fat Greek yogurt will work. This is just what I'm using today. It's been closed for a while and you get that liquid on top of the Greek yogurt. I'm gonna pour that off. All right, so I poured off the liquid. Now we've got our handy dandy trusty scale. I do one serving, which is one cup or 227 grams. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna leave it all clumped up like this in the bottom. If it freezes in that big chunk, you're not gonna be able to make your fluff. Now, what you can do is you could just make it like this. Um, it doesn't need to be frozen, but this is just one of those tricks that makes things a little bit easier. I'm just gonna thin around the outside. All right, so I spread it throughout the entire lining of the bowl. This way it's gonna freeze in a really thin layer so it'll be cold, but you can still break it down off the sides and get it to fluff. If you leave it in one big frozen chunk, it's just gonna be one solid rock and you're not gonna be able to do anything with that. All right, so now we're gonna take the fluff and we are gonna put it in the freezer. All right, so now that the bowl that you would make it in is in the freezer. At this point, I don't normally make the fluff for a couple hours. I let it freeze. I usually put it in the morning and don't make my fluff till night, but I'm gonna go over a couple things you need for the protein fluff. First thing is casein protein. Now, I use Muscle Tech. I haven't really found a brand I really like, but I feel like Muscle Tech works a little bit better than Optimum Nutrition, but neither of them are very good. So, if you guys have any suggestions on casein proteins that are really good for a decent price, let me know. But right now, I'm just using Muscle Tech vanilla ice cream because tonight I'm just going to be making a basic flavor of vanilla. Just so you guys know how to make the base protein fluff, obviously you can make different flavors with different ingredients and different protein powder. But you cannot use whey protein. Now, people ask me all the time why I don't use... Legion Athletics um, 
whey plus for my protein fluff it's because protein fluff won't work with whey if you've ever had a whey shake versus a casein shake you know that the consistent consistency is completely different whey will not fluff up properly and you have to use casein before you're going to attempt to make this recipe just make sure you have some casein protein the next thing is exanthin gum and gar gum these are now sports but any brand will work just you just want exanthin gum and gar gum I got these from Amazon because that's usually the cheapest way to go. You can buy Xanthin and Gargum at Walmart or a lot of other places, Whole Foods, but it's just going to be way more expensive. So buying them online, a lot cheaper. I use anywhere from half a teaspoon to a whole teaspoon. It all depends on the amount of volume on it you want to get in your fluff. So I usually use... Uh, half a teaspoon scoop and do a heaping scoop so it's probably closer to one teaspoon of each because I get a lot of volume out of my fluff because I have a big appetite. The things I want to point out are if you're only going to use one use xanthan gum. Xanthan is going to make it a little lighter and airier but it can work by itself. Gargum, the combination of the two is best but gargum is going to be more of like a thicker pudding texture. In combination with Xanthan gum, it works really well, but by itself, it doesn't make a very good fluff. So if you can only get one, get Xanthan gum, but I suggest getting both. And I usually do a one-to-one -one ratio, but you can play around with ratios for different consistencies. Just the amount you use of them, whether it's a half a teaspoon or a whole teaspoon of each, is really gonna depend on how much volume you wanna get out of the fluff. If you use a teaspoon of each, probably a lot of people that don't have appetite and volume capacity like I do when you're eating you might not even be able to finish the whole thing so that one's up to you obviously you're gonna need a scale hopefully you have a scale and of course most importantly you're gonna need a mixer right now I'm using a KitchenAid stand mixer that's your best option but KitchenAids are expensive on um, this isn't mine this is my mom's I'm at home right now for break and Obviously this is way nicer. I had my own mixer, but it died after <laughs> making fluff for about a year. I just didn't want to buy another one. So what I use while I'm at school, I have a Hamilton Beach uh, hand mixer that I bought for about $17 off of Amazon. The main thing is if you use a hand mixer, you need to make sure that it's fast enough to fluff up properly. The Hamilton Beach one's decent, but Honestly, your wrists are going to be sore after spending like 15-20 minutes mixing it up. It's a huge pain in the ass. So, if you already have a stand mixer or if you can afford a stand mixer, definitely go that route. It's way better than a hand mixer. And of course the other thing to go over is sweeteners. So, I usually use three different sweeteners. The amount you use is really going to depend on how much volume you make for your fluff. Um, I do a lot of volume so I add a lot of sweeteners because the more volume you get the more it will dilute the flavor. So first thing, French vanilla or caramel, usually I'm making vanilla tonight so I'm using French vanilla. Uh, da Vinci sugar free syrups, Tarani's works just as well. I like this more than Walden Farms, the flavor is better and it's a hell of a lot cheaper especially if you have a Sam's Club or a Costco, that's where I buy this. So I'll use one serving this, 30 milliliters. I also use, along with that, I like, I love the maple flavor in my fluff, so I'll use um, a sugar-free maple syrup. If you tolerate sugar alcohols, well, this tastes a lot better than Walden Farms pancake syrup. So I'll use uh, half a serving, 30 milliliters of this in my fluff, and then I'll usually use some type of stevia. This is just the plain sweet drops. I'll usually use about three droppers worth of this. Um, I would use the vanilla cream, which is really good because I'm making vanilla tonight, but I didn't have any on hand, so I'm just using the basic stevia. And I, I always use the liquid, not the powders. And then this is some Walden Farms. You can use Walden Farms. It's more expensive than the other sweeteners I use. And in my opinion, it's not quite as good. A lot of people really like it. I mean, that's totally up to you what sweeteners you want to use, but preferably for me is a combination of 
I don't like to use just stevia and I don't like to use just uh, sucralose sweeteners. The combination of them makes it taste a lot more like real sugar. So I'll use uh, Da Vinci or Tarani's, a sugar-free maple syrup, and stevia. I also like to add cinnamon because it adds a really good flavor to the fluff. Any other, any other flavorings you want to do, like um, PB2, um, cocoa powder, really any, any type of liquid sweetener or flavoring or powdered flavor that you can add, get creative with it. I'm just going to make the basic recipe tonight, show you guys how that's done. And I'm not going to make the fluff for a little bit, but another thing to go over is the liquid you use. If you're on complete poverty macros, you can use just water. What I do is I got my Nutribullet over here. I do one serving of frozen fruit blended with almond milk, and I'll use that first. So I get that flavoring from the almond milk and the frozen fruit into the fluff. And then I'll have another thing that I use uh, with my Nutribullet. I'll do water and ice cubes blended up so it's crushed ice and after I incorporate all the frozen fruit and the almond milk to get the flavor from there and there I'll get the rest of my volume generally um, solely incorporating crushed ice. Now the trick is you can use just water or cold water like I said um, the colder you keep it the better the better it'll fluff so that's why I use the crushed ice but you can't add you can't add any liquid in too fast, but if you add the crushed ice in too fast, it doesn't melt and it stays as ice chunks and it's gonna be a really awkward fluff. So just add it in really slowly and as it mixes, the it'll melt, but it'll keep the fluff really cold and that'll be the form of liquid that I add. You only wanna start out with just a little bit of liquid and add it as you go. If you add all the liquid right away or add it too fast, it's not gonna fluff up right, it's just gonna kinda deflate. So, be back in just a second when we take it out of the freezer and actually make the fluff. All right guys, so it's about that time to start making the protein fluff. Now, we've got a bunch of ice cubes. We're gonna blend those up. And we've got fruit. Tonight, I, I used to always use a mixed berry blend from Costco. Now. The mixed berries goes really well with the chocolate, but since I'm doing vanilla tonight, um, I'm doing a pineapple, strawberry, mango, and peaches blend. The mangoes go really well with the vanilla flavor, uh, 140 grams. Then we've got unsweetened almond milk vanilla. We're gonna do one cup of that, 240 milliliters. Then I'm gonna add my sweeteners to this before I blend it up, that way I make sure everything gets incorporated in the fluff evenly. Nothing clumps up when I put the exanthin gum and gargum in there. Then you get some really nasty, extremely sweet pieces. That's just gross. So now I've got the Greek yogurt, frozen Greek yogurt out of the freezer. As you can see, it is completely frozen in a thin layer. Now by the time you actually start making the fluff, this will be almost thawed out, so it'll just be nice and cold. We got one scoop of casein protein powder. Exanthin gum. I'm gonna go with one teaspoon of each. So, a teaspoon of exanthin gum. And a teaspoon of gar gum. And I'm also gonna throw some cinnamon in there. Now I usually mix the powder up so that you don't get clumps of exanthin and gargum 
gets everything gets spread out more evenly. All right, now I'm gonna scrape down the sides so everything's at the bottom. Now, like I said before, this whole step of freezing the yogurt, you don't have to do what you could do, what I'm doing right now, you could just put the Greek yogurt in there, then the protein powder and the exanthin gum and everything. What you could even do is just chill the bowl you're using first, put it in the freezer for a while, helps keep things cold. You don't have to freeze the Greek yogurt, that's just a trick I use to, that I've found to make it fluff a little better, but it works, it definitely works without doing that. So don't feel like you need to do that step, that's just a trick I've learned. Now we've got it all scraped down along the side. Bring you guys back over here. We've got it all scraped down. I'm not gonna add all this because this would be too much liquid to start with, it wouldn't fluff right. So I'm gonna add about half of this. We're gonna bring this over to the handy dandy kitchen aid and get things started. Now you wanna start off slow to get everything incorporated, but later you're gonna to wanna to whip it faster. All right, so now we're gonna slowly add more of the liquid and keep whipping it. All right, so usually after I get the full thing of almond milk and fruit incorporated, I'll let it whip up and then I'm gonna scrape the sides down so that you make sure everything gets mixed in evenly. Otherwise, you get clumps of frozen Greek yogurt or exanthin gar gum or sweetener, whatever. Stuff gets stuck at the bottom. So at this point, once it's got enough volume to it, then you wanna scrape the sides down. So now at this point, um, I'm gonna start slowly incorporating the frozen ice, or the crushed ice, blended ice, yeah, that's right. The blended ice for the rest of my liquid to get the volume I want. Now, the more liquid at you add, adding it slowly, the more volume you get, so if you want a stronger flavor and less volume, don't add as much liquid. You want more volume, a little more diluted flavor, you're okay with that, add more liquid you can get a hell of a lot of volume out of this. So I'm gonna fill up this whole mixing bowl. Normally I'd actually make more because I normally use a bigger bowl, but yeah, it can make a lot of volume. Now, of course, you gotta lick the beater. It's like being a kid again. Now, I've never actually used this particular uh, fruit, fruit blend before, but this, the flavor combination with the sweeteners I used, 
actually tastes a lot like cookie dough, which is awesome. Yeah, this is the basic recipe. As you can see, I used a lot of xanthan gum just because I'm used to using the hand mixer and that doesn't fluff up near as well as using a KitchenAid. It's been a long time since I've actually had the luxury of using a stand mixer. So probably I would have been fine with half a teaspoon of each or just slightly over half a teaspoon of each. I used a whole teaspoon and as you can see, this is very thick. This is the consistency. which is awesome. This is going to be extremely filling, but you could probably get by with less, and this could have made way more volume. As you saw, Like I had to lift the KitchenAid up just to max out as much volume as I could, but I could easily get way more volume out of this if I had a bigger mixing bowl, so it really depends on the size of your mixer, or if you're using a hand mixer, just on the size of the bowl you choose. All right, so at this point in the protein fluff journey, um, what you can either do if you're on really low calories and macros, you can just eat this right now. It's gonna be an extremely filling, uh, high protein meal. If you're more like my situation where you eat 3,600 calories a night, but you have a huge appetite, this is a great way to help fill you up so you don't overeat, which is more of an issue for me than under eating. People ask me this all the time, how I eat my protein fluff. I'll eat about half of it by itself and then with the last half, what I'm gonna do, I'll mix in a bunch of cereal, other sweet stuff. It's kinda like the milk base for my cereal, except it's thicker, has more flavor, really high in protein, and delicious. At this point, you can either eat it right away, you can put it in the freezer for a little bit, don't put it in too long, it's gonna get kinda weird consistency if it freezes too much, or you can leave it in the fridge probably max about two hours. Anywhere after that, it's gonna settle way too much and it's not gonna be the same fluff anymore. What, I'm, what I usually do is I set in the fridge for a little bit, get the rest of my re, uh, meal ready, weigh my cereal out and everything, and then I'll grab it out of the fridge and that's my meal. They were really good. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm gonna be mixing in with my protein fluff tonight. I'm a huge cereal fan for, most of you probably already know that already if you follow me on Instagram, but I love my cereal, so this is what I'm gonna be mixing in tonight. We've got a base of Special K Protein and Fiber One, some Cascadian Farms Cinnamon Crunch, Honey Graham O's, and the best Crave cereal, Kellogg's Crave S'mores. And if you can't tell, this is a pretty massive bowl. I'll put the macros up for the protein fluff on the screen right about here. Now, as you can see, the base recipe with the way I made it, pretty much absolute base with the fruit and everything included, it's a little over uh, 350 calories, only 30 grams of carbs, only three grams of fat, and 50 grams of protein. So this is a really macro friendly meal. I mean, not the way I eat it. It's not so macro friendly, but this for the volume, you're not gonna beat it. Any of the other protein fluff recipes I've seen, there's a couple that are similar to this, but a lot of them use whey and you just don't get the volume and consistency that you do with this awesomeness. So I hope you guys like the recipe. If you have any questions about the recipe, feel free to comment, and if you actually make it and make some awesome creations with it, I would love to see what you guys make. I've been seeing a lot of it so far, and I'd love to see more of it, so feel free to tag me on it if you post it on Instagram. Uh, my Instagram is at W underscore Kemp. That should be in the comment section, and also in the comments, I have the full recipe written out, laid out for you. So. If you don't want to go back and rewatch the video, you can just read through that, and that pretty much lays out the whole thing. I hope you guys enjoy the recipe. I'll catch you next time.